Right, so this is our buyer's guide of the Discovery Sport. Um, this is the 2015. This one is 37 something thousand miles, I think. <laughs> Can't actually see. Um, you get all the gadgets and gizmos with these ones, including um, my friend's dog, which is in the back. Hello! Oh, he's not paying any attention at all. This one does have loads of random things left over in it. It is a little on the messy side, but it's the family car, so that's how they get used. Um, you've got loads of space in the back. This one's got a big panoramic sunroof, which is cool. Great option to have if you can find one with that. I think the colour's called the Wild Blue. Some of these come with uh, either the Meridian or another stereo upgrade here for in the uh, uh, in the speakers, which is pretty cool if you can find one with that. But most of them, when they first started with this car, uh, it was the 2.2 SD4 engine, which is Ford. Um, I think for the first year or so of production, and then they went to the engine and two litre diesels, which is either like 150 brake or 180 brake. Um, the first ones that were 2.2, I think that was 158 brake. And they're generally pretty strong and they last really well. It's got all the gadgets. I really love that you can sort of check on an app in this where the location is, whether the doors are open, um, where it's been, track your route and whatever. You can see whatever it's done, uh, where you've gone to, all sorts of stuff. It's uh, It's got sort of all the kind of gadgets you would expect a really high-end car to have. I think this one being the, uh, the HSE, uh, SD4 I think is one of the first ones. Um, nevertheless, it's got all the things that you'd really want to have. The later ones have got um, sort of uh, up, I think an updated touch screen and things like that. This one's got sort of the roof back on the back of it, which is a nice little helpful thing to have as well. And from what I can tell, most of them have the leather in, which is cool. This one's got a doggy rock. And the dog is just definitely not paying any attention. Um, yeah. Autos for most of them, but you can get them with manual. This is the nine speed automatic, which is pretty cool, as opposed to six speed manual. So if you were gonna do some serious off-roading, you would probably want uh, the manual, but hey, there we are. You've got your extra buttons for the boot down here, um, or you can do it from the fob. The fob really controls everything in this car. It's a really cool thing to have. One slightly annoying thing that I find with modern cars, you've got the uh, electronic handbrake, which is marginally irritating. Really love the aluminium finish on the dash and stuff. That's really cool. It's got the feel of like one of the more high-end products, I think, that they do. The bits at the top are quite nice as well. Sort of everything in this car is quite well thought out and really functional. The size is sort of surprisingly small for what you would think is a really big car, um, but you can live with it. It's kind of usable in town, it's not too impractical. You've got loads of space for things as well. These are bits in between the seats, that's good. Um, the heated seats, all the little traction buttons and the things for the different settings for uh, whether it's sand, rocky terrain, snow, ordinary, eco modes down there. And yeah, all the nice buttons. Okay, so there's the legroom in the back that I was telling you about that's quite big, so that's kind of cool. Um, and the finish is pretty much what you would expect. Let's see if we can find this bonnet catch. There's not loads to see with a modern engine, is there? It's kind of plastic. <laughs> it's all sort of covered up. It's quite different from the older Range Rover, older Land Rovers and Range Rovers, where everything's kind of uncovered. So see, you can even see the de the turbo for the turbo diesel. Yeah, it is kind of all covered over. But you know, I guess most of the owners are not really going to look at these awfully often.
Hmm. Okay. So yeah, that's uh, that's the discovery sport. When looking out for these, you're unlikely to find um, too many that have got loads and loads of damage from off-road, and I think most of them haven't made their way off-road yet. I read somewhere that the average Land Rover or Range Rover doesn't actually go off-road until it's seven years old, because the average first couple of buyers don't actually take them off-road. So uh, this one, being only four years old, is a good bit away from going off-road for the first time, one would expect. I know we haven't done anything with it. Um, and my friend, whose car it is, I very much doubt he will, uh, if ever. Oh, you get really nice steering controls as well. That was another thing, even though the wheel's upside down. Such is the nature of our preparation. One thing I do really like about these, compared to the ones from a few years ago, the hazard warning light is, is much smaller and not a massive stupid red button that's really in the way and really prominent and irritating. Um, that was one of the things that kind of bugged me about the L322, the, the Range Rover that was about 15 years ago, um, that I drove one or two of. Um, so yeah, that's kind of good. I think ergonomically it's generally just much better and much more polished. The seats are really comfortable too, and it's it's just generally an accessible car. It feels really modern. It's a comfortable place to be and spend a lot of time if you're going to spend time in one on the motorway. So, highly recommend. And I'm told, especially the 2.2s are particularly reliable. I know in the Freelander 2, they got a really good press. And, and a lot of people, um, I know Neen Overland, the specialist, said uh, for Land Rover products, said that uh, the 2.2s are among the most reliable of the modern um, Land Rover products. So if they said it, it probably has a lot of truth in it. And this one having that engine should be pretty solid for goodness knows at least another 100 and odd thousand miles. Let's see if the dog is happy with it. Are you happy in here? Yeah, he's definitely happy. He definitely loves being in the car. <laughs> and there's our boot space. Uh, yeah, somewhat doggy damaged. We gave the dog McDonald's earlier. He seemed quite happy about that. Um, I'll let you judge what the outcome for the boot is for giving a dog a McDonald's in the boot area. One really cool thing about it is you can open like the ski hatch bit even if you've got uh, the doggy cage in which is the actual Land Rover product. Ooh. No aftermarket merchandise here. Oh yeah, you've got the additional um, 12 volt port as well in the boot which is cool. And uh, that's the bit for putting the seats down at the side. So it's really, really practical. Some really helpful ideas. Some little lights and stuff in there too. And this one's got the extra little mat on the floor to prevent that carpet from getting messy. Um, where you got your spare tire and all the gadgets and gizmos that go under there. Um, so yeah. I hope you found the video sort of constructive because uh, these cars now, I mean, having been new uh, from, I think about well, about 28, 31,000, I think they started up to about 46. So in the region of them, um, take you up to uh, a mid-level Evoke. So I think it is like a family-sized Evoke, slightly uh, less high-end on the specification, but sort of higher-end on the practicality. Um, in comparison, um, you know, you now can get these for sort of in the region of, um, of you know, well under 20,000 for one of these. Even a dealer will sell you a 20,000 pound Discovery Sport. And uh, the dog loves it, so. Abby, come here. There we are, what does that tell you? Doesn't that tell you everything you need to know about the Discovery Sport? Cool, hope you enjoyed the video. Abby, do you not like the car? Do you not like it? Definitely couldn't care less.